John Jones is out. Stipe Miocic refused the interim title shot. Aspinall and Pavlovich are in. And UFC 295 has been shuffled. And what would you know? UFC fans are crying about it. I have a whole bunch of things to say about the news today. And let's get right into it with John Jones' injury. It could be fake. Who knows? Stop bullying the guy about it. There's literal footage of him allegedly tearing the tendon in his pectoral muscle or whatever. Here's the clip. Training last night, got injured. He was wrestling and he tore the tendon that connects your pec to the bone off the bone. Eight months, gonna need surgery. He's out. Why are people acting like John Jones ruined UFC 295? Where's the same energy for little cretins like Kai Kara France who pretend they got knocked out in sparring, don't provide any footage, don't provide any doctor's notes, pull out of their fight with Mano Cap and then show up at the arena and everyone goes, oh, Mano Cap is a bad person for throwing water bottles. Hey, why are you begging on John Jones and defending K Kara France or whatever the heck his name is? It could be fake. UFC could be WWE. I mean, John Jones had the most choreographed, scripted fight against Cyril Gone ever. Like, I don't think that was real. But hey, if this schizo is saying, let's give John the benefit of the doubt and stop bullying the poor guy, why don't we do that? Anyway, this has resulted in Stipe Miocic turning down the interim belt. We'll never see the guy fight again. He clearly only wanted to come back for a bag against John Jones. What I guess the pay per view points difference would have been massive because this fight has been dropped to the co main, the interim heavyweight belt, and the uh, vacant light heavyweight belt between Yuri Prohashka and Alex Pereira is now the main event on the card. So maybe he lost his pay per view points, but you'd think they would have kept Stipe in the main event spot against Pavlovich or Aspinall and still giving him his pay-per-view points. Why Stipe is not taking... Well, because he's going to get brutally beaten up by either of them. Just like he probably would have brutally lost to John. I don't know. He probably had the best chance. Honestly, he has the best chance against John. I shouldn't say he would brutally lose to John. I was honestly thinking he might yeah, he might beat John. But he wouldn't beat Tom Aspinall or Sergey Pavlovich. Which leads us to the replacement bout. Like I mentioned, this has been dropped to the co-main slot. But it's still going to be a five-round fight. It's not going to get out of the first. Sergey Pavlovich is going to hurt Tom Aspinall so badly. Pavlo Chad versus Aspasoy. This is how this fight is going to go. We saw them both versus Curtis Blades. You can say whatever you want about that ooh, fluke knee injury. Blades was landing on Aspinall way better than he was landing on Pavlovich. And I know we didn't really see Pavlovich's takedown defense tested by Blades, which we a lot of us were hoping for. Well, it's because he couldn't. He was getting tagged up on the feet. Didn't know where, didn't know what to do. Blades was a frozen man. That's exactly what's going to happen to Aspinall. Aspinall's not going to be able to run out and t tackle him like he did the Volkov. First of all, I doubt he'd even be able to do that to Volkov in a rematch. I would almost pick, like I wouldn't pick Volkov in a rematch, but Volkov has a good chance to fight Aspinall again. He's first of all bulked up and... Yeah, someone rugby tackles you and then just starts, like, mauling you like Aspinall did. You don't expect that in heavyweight. Volkov's kind of slow. Pavlovich isn't. He did that to Pavlovich. Pavlovich is going to catch him with something nasty up the middle or just down the pipe, which is going to be landing on him anyway. They're both going to be trading. It's going to be landing on the feet. And I'm predicting Pavlovich to win this fight. It's, like, in two and a half weeks, short notice camp. I think Pavlovich is just going to put the pain on Aspinall. It's going to be embarrassing. Sorry, Brits, but your last chance of a British champion is going out the window with Tom Soipanel. Anyway, despite losing the main event and having this shuffle at the top of the card, UFC 295, it's not bad. Honestly, this makes it better. John Jones versus Stipe Miocic was not the greatest main event. Like, it's like living off the hype of Jones from before the layoff or before the, the hiatus to become a heavyweight, right? And then there's like whole steep hype, but they're both old kind of men, old fat men. I want to see two in-shape heavyweights fight for the interim belt. Why this is an interim and not simply John vacating definitely is sus as Yuri Prohashka and Jamal Hill both vacated after similar injuries that would cause like layoffs of around eight months to a year, which is what John's expecting.
They're not expecting this fight to be rebooked until sometimes next next year. They're expecting an eight month layoff for John Jones. All right, let's just let the division move on. Let's make this the real championship. But it's not going to be. Regardless, it's still going to be a pretty good main event, and it's going to be a pretty good. Or sorry, it's going to be a pretty good co-main event, and it's going to be a decent card. Obviously, we have uh, Yuri Prohashka and. Alex Pereira for fighting for the vacant light heavyweight belt, elevated to the main event slot. Makes sense. They had their full camp. It's not short, short notice. It honestly should go longer and be more of a like back and forth war than Pavlovich brutally beating Tom Aspinall. You know, we're going to see Yeri Prohashka and uh, Alex Pereira trade. Definitely, definitely for more than a round. Uh, it'll probably go a decent time until someone just gets clipped, right? Then we got the featured fight between Diego Lopez and Pat Sammartini. This will be a uh, grappler's delight. We're going to see a lot of nice uh, wrestling and jujitsu on display here. Um, the scrambles are going to be insane. What can we say? It's going to be a good fight. Andrade versus Dern is an L, hence why it's in the L fourth or second spot on the card, which has unnamed, just an L spot. It's not the card opener. It's not the featured bout. Obviously not co-main or main. Just the L pay-per-view WMMA slot we can start calling it the obligatory WMMA slot whatever uh I just want to say something why does UFC try to trick us into believing that these are hype worthy fights and that deserve to be on a pay-per-view or you know as a co-main of a fight night because last time I remember Viviana Arujo versus Jennifer Maya as the co-main recently Jennifer Maya got caught off a loss. Since when are we cutting fighters who are fighting in the co-main spot off a loss? Isn't that supposed to be a competitive fight? No. They're freaking robbing us. The card opens with an absolute banger between Matt Steamrolla Fravola and Benoit Mali is still part of France, in my opinion, Saint Denis. That's going to be a, a crazy one. 100% ending in a finish. The prelims are absolute trash. There's four fights on the prelims. They better get their together and get us at least two or three more fights on there. I mean, you can make Schnell versus Urseg the featured fight. That's not bad. Schnell has put on some really great performances, and Urseg is a decent Australian prospect there. But what? We have what else is on that? Ricci versus Godinez. And then like Jared Gordon versus someone and some other crap fight on the early prelims we need at least two more fights dude i appreciate you guys watching just wanted to cover some of the news here quickly let me know what you guys think about the sergey pavlovich tom aspinall heavyweight interim title fight that is now the co-main on ufc 295 i'm actually fired up for it i think sergey pavlovich is going to brutally hurt and ko tom aspinall if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post a wide variety of MMA content, the most unique on MMA YouTube. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members. Without you guys, the channel would not be possible. And a special shout out to all my Lion Tier members, Coltis Gordon, Uniform Down, Ninja Choke, Mexican Gnome, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Cobra Kai, Pigger, Strap Jackson, Patrick Call, Droid C, John Paul DeHoria, Palpadank TV, Calico, Jack Clash and High Cap Native. Dime, Bobby. Dime, mommy.